Hi, I'm Pete Killingly. I'm Head of Church Engagement for CARE. Micah chapter 6 verse 8 asks the question, what does the Lord require of you? And answers it to act justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. We're asking how should we live in light of the gospel and in this video we're looking at the pursuit of justice. God loves justice. Psalm 89 verse 14 tells us that justice is the foundation of his throne. Think about that image. It's telling us that his kingdom, his rule that will one day cover the earth is built on justice. That's a sturdy foundation. What is justice? What does it mean? It's a Hebrew word, mishpat, which basically means treating people equitably. Particularly in the Bible, there's a focus on treating the vulnerable equitably, showing justice. In the Old Testament, there are four groups mentioned again and again. They're sometimes called the quartet of the vulnerable. Those with the least social power, closest to starvation if famine or plague hit the land. Who are they? The widow, the orphan, the foreigner and the poor. God loves justice and he has a special heart for those groups. And he calls us to be the same. In Isaiah chapter 1, God tells his people what he wants to see from them. Isaiah 1.17, learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Justice matters to God. When you become a Christian, everything changes overnight. You've become a new creation. You have a new purpose. The Holy Spirit now dwells within you and he is showing you all sorts of areas of your life where you need to turn from your sin and start living God's way. Maybe to do with your money, your words, the way you use your body, all sorts of things. But as you read the Bible more and more, what Jesus says, what the apostles say, what the prophets say, all of it is what God's saying, you realize that the change God wants to make in you is not just about your private behaviors. It spills out into the way we treat others, even those we don't know. The Holy Spirit is producing within us love, and that love overflows into justice. Jesus told a parable. It's recorded in Luke chapter 10. An expert in the law is trying to test Jesus and they're discussing the greatest commandment to love God with all your heart, soul, strength and mind and to love your neighbor as yourself. He asks Jesus, who is my neighbor? And Jesus tells the parable of the good Samaritan. Luke 10 verse 30, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Jesus asks, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus tells him, go and do likewise. Jesus is showing us what it looks like to love our neighbor. He is giving an example of what justice is. The Samaritan meets the man's needs, material, physical, economic. Out of his riches, he cares for the one who lacks. That's justice. Now, this isn't a chore to add to the to-do list. It's not to be motivated by guilt. God's given you so much, now you need to give to those who are less well off than you. No, 
That's actually no different from the way the world operates, motivating generosity and care for the poor through guilt. Instead, this heart for justice is awakened in us through grace. As we become more and more aware just how much God has done for us, we grasp how spiritually poor we are. We find our hearts gravitating to the materially poor. God is making us more like him, conforming us to his image and teaching us like him to love justice, to care for the weak and the vulnerable and the poor. What does this look like in practice? At an individual level, like the Good Samaritan, we look out for those in need. We believe the promise of Proverbs 19, 17. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will reward them for what they have done. At a political level, perhaps you want to engage with your MP. As you read about injustice in the world or in your community, write to your MP. Write letters full of truth and grace, overflowing with the fruit of the Spirit, but write about the injustice that you, as their constituent, care about. And pray for care as we pursue justice, as we stand up for the most vulnerable. Sometimes that's on causes that are popular, sometimes it's an uphill battle. But we follow in the footsteps of Christians like William Wilberforce, who fought for justice in the battle against slavery precisely because of his Christian faith. What does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. We've seen now what it looks like to live in light of the gospel, experiencing the power of forgiveness from God and to others seeing the priority of mission, sharing the gospel, participating as a member of the body of Christ, the local church, living the life of holiness in the power of the Spirit, and now today pursuing justice because justice is the foundation of God's throne. Thanks for watching.